Choi. I'm a senior city planner with the Department of City Planning. I'm here today to be your tour guide for our Project Planning 101 presentation. Last summer, the Department of City Planning hosted a series of meetings around Los Angeles to talk about the work of our Policy Planning Bureau. Today, we're going to focus our presentation on project planning and how those policies and goals that are adopted in our community plans and our general plan are brought to life through our project planning work. Let's get started. We're going to talk about how the department is organized and who we are, what we do. We're going to talk about the typical project workflow, as well as give you an online tutorial to have the resources to participate in the project planning process. City planning is divided into three bureaus. We have our policy planning bureau that works to develop goals, policies, objectives, and programs um, at the citywide level as well as our community plan levels and more specifically in our uh, overlays. We have our project planning bureau which is the focus of our presentation today. The project planning bureau implements the goals, objectives, policies, and programs in our general plan as well as um, our zoning code. Finally, we have our Resource Management Bureau, which ensures that the department uh, functions efficiently as well as has the resources to do its work. Together, we make up the Department of City Planning and we work together to meet our mission statement, which is to create and implement plans, policies, and programs that realize a vision of Los Angeles as a collection of healthy and sustainable neighborhoods, each with a distinct sense of place based on a foundation of mobility, economic vitality, and improved quality of life for all residents. Our Project Planning Bureau is divided into six different divisions. We have our Development Services Center. It's split into three offices. We have the Metro Development Services Center, the Valley Development Services Center, as well as our West Los Angeles Development Services Center. All cases that are filed start at one of our three Development Services Centers. There's also case management services and additional specialized services for different um, specific entitlements such as wireless or um, map services. We also have our Office of Zoning Administration that uh, reviews quasi-judicial requests and it's comprised of our zoning administrators um, and there's also the Revocations and Nuisance Abatement Division. We also have our citywide project planning division, which is comprised of the major project section, which reviews environmental impact reports, um, as well as our expedited processing section. The work of our project planning divisions is split into three geographies. We have our Valley geography, we have our West South Harbor geography, as well as our central project planning division. These uh, geographies are split uh, between our area planning commission, um, areas. In the Valley, we have the North Valley and the South Valley APC. In the West South Harbor, we have the West Los Angeles, South Los Angeles, as well as our Harbor Area Planning Commission. In the Central Area, we have our uh, Central Area Planning Commission, as well as our East Los Angeles Planning Commission. The work of the Project Planning Bureaus focuses on uh, reviewing and implementing our specific plans, uh, community design overlays, um, pedestrian um, oriented districts as well as uh, case processing and review, development review in general. The city of Los Angeles is almost 500 square miles and within that 500 square miles we have a diversity of our built environment from our beaches and our coastlines all the way to our valleys and our downtown and Hollywood areas as well as the Los Angeles River. Our built environment is diverse and that is what makes Los Angeles unique. Accompanying the diversity of our built environment, we also have a diversity of projects that we review. We have our single family home projects, uh, some that are um, part of historic preservation overlay zones. We have multifamily projects, as well as uh, projects requesting new uh, signs for businesses. Uh, these may be some of our smaller scale projects, but there's also projects such as the Los Angeles Football Club, as well as um, large institutional and university projects that come before the Geographic Project Planning Division when the project does not involve an environmental impact report. The foundation of our project planning work is the implementation of our general plans and specific plans as well as other regulations that have been adopted through a public process. We also have to work within the regulatory framework that has been created through federal, state, and local regulations. 
The zoning code is an example of a regulation that needs to be applied to all projects and it guides the development and has standards with, to which development projects must follow. We also have our California Environmental Quality Act that guides environmental review as well as serves as a disclosure um, document for any decisions made by a public agency as well, including the city. We also have the California Coastal Commission that regulates development in our coast, coastal areas and coastlines. And we also have the Subdivision Map Act as an example of another state law that needs to be followed. Now we're going to discuss what we do um, in terms of the types of projects that come to the city for approvals, the entitlement types uh, when they are necessary that also come to the Department of City Planning, and the decision makers that make the decisions on these entitlement cases. The first type of project we are going to discuss is the buy right project. A buy right project is a project that fits into the box of the regulations and rules that have been set by the city as well as the state. An example could be a small single family home renovation uh, that doesn't trigger um, a threshold for additional discretionary review, such as a kitchen remodel that may uh, require some electrical or plumbing permits. That type of project would go straight to our Development Services Center at the De uh, Department of Building and Safety, um, and they would go to pull a permit, and the Department of Building and Safety would check off and make sure that all of the rules have been met. If a project is in a special area and needs additional review or needs relief from the regulations because they don't need it, they would come to the Department of City Planning. Uh, the case would be filed similarly at the Development Services Center. The project would go through a DCP project workflow, which we will dis uh, discuss and describe in greater detail. A decision maker would make a decision um, or a project would go to a public hearing as well as a decision meeting by the appropriate decision maker. Uh, once the project is approved, um, the project can be um, returned to the Development Services Center to pull permit. Or if a project is denied, most requests have an appeal process that can determine the final outcome of the project. We're going to describe the decision makers and the types of cases that these decision makers have jurisdiction over. The first is the Director of Planning. Um, the Director of Planning is noted by the prefix DIR, and typically these types of cases are for a compliance review to ensure that uh, a project meets the rules and regulations of, let's say, our specific plan through a project permit compliance or an on-menu density bonus case, which is noted with the suffix DB. Typically, the Director of Planning um, delegates his or her authority to staff to make um, these types of compliance review decisions. Next, we have the zoning administrator, which oversees decision making on a myriad of different types of cases. It can be a conditional use, for example, for a church in the R3 zone, to a conditional use for alcohol um, for a on-site service, ser service restaurant or a um, grocery store that wants to sell alcohol for off-site off consumption. We also have um, deviations such as the adjustment process and the zoning administrator's determination process. Next, we have the advisory agency, which is the implementer of the subdivision map act. The case types that the advisory agency, who um, it's usually a hearing held by the deputy advisory agency, someone who has been designated by the director of planning um, as uh, fit to hold hearings and make decisions. The types of cases you'll see is a vesting tenant track map, a parcel map. Um, another type of suffix you might see is a condo or a small lot subdivision. And these are clues into what types of cases and requests are being asked of the decision maker. Next, we have our planning commissions. Uh, we have seven area planning commission, one citywide um, city planning commission, as well as our cultural heritage commission. These commissions are appointed by um, the mayor and are comprised of volunteers. The Area Planning Commission, uh, which is noted by this prefix in case numbers APC, um, are the main appeal bodies for many of the decisions that occur over here by the director and the zoning administrator, as well as some types of advisory agency cases. Um, they also see zone change requests that involve 50 or fewer units or a 
net increase of less than 50,000 square feet of um, commercial non-residential floor area. They also review uh, specific plan exceptions if a project can't meet the requirements of a specific plan. They would also go to the Area Planning Commission for um, permission to, to deviate from those regulations. We also have the Citywide Planning Commission that um, oversees and reviews um, decision making um, on cases that affect um, at a citywide level, create a citywide effect. Um, they review general plan amendments, they review zone changes that are of a larger scale. Um, there are some conditional uses that the CPC reviews, um, such as uh, for schools. And uh, they also are the decision makers on our off-menu density bonus cases. Um, oftentimes, when it involves a legislative action, such as a general plan amendment or a zone change, the City Planning Commission makes a recommendation to our City Council, which has the highest level of authority. The City Council approves um, general plan amendments and zone changes and height district changes um, and sets uh, legislation through ordinances. Now we are going to go over how to read our case numbers. Our case numbers are divided by a decision maker, the year the case was filed, a sequential numbering, as well as the entitlement suffixes which speak to the types of requests that are being um, asked of the decision maker. So in this case, we have the director of planning who is a decision maker. The case was filed in 2017 the sequential number, as well as a density bonus request for on-menu incentives and a site plan review. Here are a few other examples of a commission, a city planning commission case with a general plan amendment and a zone change, as well as a ZA case. And you may also see cases that look like this with this type of case number. This is a, stands for vesting tenant attract and many of our subdivision cases that are track maps or vesting tenant or track maps will have this prefix. Suffix here, small lots, that's a clue into what type of project this request is. Now we are going to go through our project workflow, starting with intake, case assignment, case review, public noticing and hearings when one is required, findings and conditions, as well as recommendations or actions. In addition to our uh, pre-filing resources at our Development Services Center, projects that are filed within an overlay or a specific plan uh, need to be reviewed before they are filed by our project planners in our geographic project planning division. Uh, the applicants are given what's called a project planning referral form uh, where a lot of the work to review for compliance and explain regulations happens before a project is filed. So a project planning referral form is a type of permission slip to file the case. It's not any sort of approval, but it's a identification for the public counter that is taking in the case that this project has been uh, reviewed and it has been explained to applicants what the specific plan requirements are. Our cases are filed at one of our three development services center. We have our Valley um, Development Services Center at the Marvin Browdy Constituent Services Center in Van Nuys. We also have our Metro uh, Development Services Center at Figueroa Plaza. Finally, we have our Los, West Los Angeles office, uh, which opened about a year ago. And any of these offices are open to receive cases, um, typically by appointment. And the appointments can be made through our website. Once a case is filed, a case number is assigned to the case and early notification report goes out to any interested parties as well as all neighborhood councils. We will go over how to sign up for the early notification report during our web tutorial. Once a case is filed, it takes a few days for a case to be uh, transferred to the appropriate office and a case assigned to a planner. Once that happens, the project planner would work on deeming the case. The project planner goes through the entire case file and ensures that all of the appropriate materials are in the case file in order for the project to be processed. If not, the applicant is given uh, a letter and the case is placed on hold. These are the standards by which we review projects. We check for use. If a project uh, site 
limits the project to specific uses, we want to make sure that the project is compliant with those regulations. We look at if there is new construction, how tall the building is to make sure that height requirements um, as well as setbacks, which is distances of the buildings away from the property lines, and ensure that those regulations are met. We want to make sure that uh, parking is provided per code or any other uh, regulation that is allowed, um, as well as density, which talks about the number of units, and the floor area ratio, which is uh, typically how non-residential floor area, commercial floor area is governed. You have a site plan here, for example, that has tells you exactly how many rooms this is for a hotel. Um, you can see that there is a rear yard setback here. Uh, there are some standard things that we check to make sure that the plans are complete. And for specific requests, we also ensure all of those uh, pieces of information are shown, shown on the plans as well as the case file. Now let's talk about environmental review. CEQA was adopted by the California Legislature in 1970 as a disclosure document for any projects that are receiving discretionary approvals from any decision-making body. The first question we ask ourselves is, is the project subject to the California Environmental Quality Act? The answer to this question determines what path the project takes in terms of environmental review. If a project does not require environmental review, then it can continue. An example of this is a uh, sign off for a sign permit in the signage supplemental use district that meets all of the regulations and the supplemental use district ordinance does not require the filing of a case. If a project is subject to CEQA, the next question we ask ourselves is, is there an exemption uh, that applies to this project? The state legislature established categorical as well as statutory exemptions for certain types of projects uh, that do not exceed a certain threshold. An example could be a small addition to an existing structure or a division of land into four or fewer lots that has less than 20% slope. A public notification for this type of project would be a notice of exemption. Uh, once a determination is made by a decision maker, the applicant or the city would file this notice of exemption with the county recorder's office. Uh, the next question is if it is not, if the project is not sub, uh, does not have an exemption category that can be applied to it, it would go through an initial study process. Through an initial study, we would be analyzing and looking for the types of impacts a project would have and whether those impacts are significant but mitigatable or significant and unavoidable. If a project has impacts uh, that are avoidable and can be mitigated or a project doesn't have impacts, at all, uh, as a disclosure, we can issue a negative declaration, which is this ND acronym, or a mitigated negative declaration if it has mitigation measures. There is a public circulation and review period for a MND or an ND, and it depends on the location of the project and proximity to state uh, resources as well as local, uh, locally owned properties by local jurisdictions. Um, and that review period is either 20 or 30 days. A notice of determination is issued once a decision is made by a decision maker, and that decision incorporates all of the feedback and um, comments and the information that is provided um, through this MND and ND process. Finally, if a project has significant impacts that are unavoidable and unmitigatable, a project would require an environmental impact report. There are more opportunities for public input because an environmental impact report process is generally a more stringent process. There is a notice of preparation and a scoping meeting that occurs where um, the public, any member of the public, can come and give input on any potential impacts of the proposed project. Uh, the city prepares the um, draft environmental impact report uh, once that is issued, we have a notice of completion that is issued and a notice of ability for public review. The public review process and time period depends. Um, it can range from anywhere to um, up to 60 days or longer if the city chooses to extend. Um, during the draft comment period, the city receives comments from all different types of stakeholders. Um, all of those comments are responded to in a um, 
final EIR. Um, the final EIR is comprised of those responses to comments as well as the draft um, environmental impact report and any supplemental information that is required to address those comments are included as well. Finally, when a decision is made and the uh, EIR is certified, a notice of determination is issued and the city or the applicant will file the notice of determination uh, with the county uh, clerk for notification of uh, this decision. Another important part of the project planning process is design review. Here are some examples of the resources that we have uh, regarding design uh, for projects. We have our citywide design guidelines that are split into the residential, commercial, and industrial design guidelines that really speak to the unique uh, development typologies as well as needs of these types of uses um, and ensures that the principles of good urban design, uh, making sure there's good transitions between the public realm and the private realm, um, as well as connectivity and um, access for all uh, multimodal users are achieved um, in these three types of settings. We also have, uh, in certain select areas of the city, our design review boards, uh, which ensure implementation of our specific plans um, and the best expression of the design components of those specific plans um, in the projects that are filed in those areas. Finally, we have our urban design studio, which is an internal as well as an external resource to uh, de the Department of City Planning as well as the development and the public um, neighborhoods, communities, citywide, uh, they uh, often meet with de uh, developers and applicants to provide early consultation on uh, and feedback on development proposals, as well as um, they uh, are a resource to project planners um, through the, uh, the professional volunteer program in providing peer review of projects prior to going to our citywide planning commission. Here is an example of how good urban design can really transform a project. Here to the left, you see a building that is a little drab. There's no differentiation between the top floor and the bottom floor. You have a closed wall on this side, um, whereas compared to this picture on the right um, that utilizes good urban design principles of differentiating between the bottom layer and the top layer, um, there's a lot of openings, there's awnings, um, creating a lot of visual interest, and this is one way that urban design can really transform a project into uh, something that is more desirable for the community. Public input is an integral part of our planning process, and one of the ways public uh, participation happens is through our public hearings. This is an example of our public hearing notice, and I'm going to point out a few pieces of information that uh, you should focus on in terms of reviewing a project. First is the project site and the address. Second is the case number and the environmental uh, case number as well. There's uh, information about who is holding the hearing, the date and time, and if you have any questions about the project before the hearing, you can contact the staff person, the staff planner uh, assigned to the case. It's also really important to look at what the project is that's being proposed, as well as the request that is being asked of the decision maker. In this case, you have a project that is a restaurant open to the general public with alcohol sales um, in the MR1 zone. And down here are the actual requests of the decision maker, uh, which include a restaurant for use in, by the general public in the MR1 zone as well as um, the serving of alcohol on site. This is a uh, notice that we wanted to highlight. It is a recent uh, courtesy notice that the department has been issuing for commission uh, related cases. For example, um, the Area Planning Commission and the Citywide Planning Commission uh, consider cases that uh, are a zone change or um, a general plan amendment, some legislative action, or maybe a conditional use those hearings um, happen at the hearing officer level, and um, you will receive a notice that looks like this for that hearing. Um, and once that hearing takes place, a decision meeting will happen um, later down the line, and the date of that meeting will be shown on this hearing notice, and anyone who signs up to receive notification will do so 
uh, prior to the decision making meeting at the Area Planning Commission or the Citywide Planning Commission. Now let's talk about uh, findings and conditions. Anytime a uh, decision maker makes a decision on a particular project, they need to make um, appropriate findings. Findings are the explanation as to why a project is being approved or denied. Uh, for all cases uh, that receive a decision have findings. Even if the project is being denied, the decision maker needs to explain why the project is being denied. The basis of the findings come from our regulatory framework. We have our general plan elements, we have our community plans, and a lot of times um, the mandatory finding is that the project is in compliance with the general plan and the specific plan uh, for that area. A lot of, a lot of times projects um, are sometimes maybe 95% of the way there, um, and in order to get an approval, they need to make some changes to their plans. That's where conditions come in. Conditions are a way the decision maker expresses uh, a way the project can comply with all of the regulations in order to receive an approval. It may be that the project is requesting to operate um, past 11 p.m. in some of our commercial corner areas. And um, if a decision maker wants to approve that, then they would have to make a finding as to why that is appropriate or condition it down to uh, maybe closing at 10 o'clock because that is what's appropriate for the situation. All of our decisions end up in a written format in the letter of determination. Uh, this is an example of a determination by the Citywide Planning Commission. A few things to look for is um, the information about the planning area, the case numbers, the project site, and this will tell you what the project is and exactly what was decided. Before we move on, we are going to run through some examples of the workflow as um, part of different types of entitlement applications. So first is a director level case with the CE, which is a categorical exemption. An example of this could be a, um, a density bonus case that is on menu um, in, and requesting a categorical exemption of, let's say, a class 32, which allows for urban infill development. An application is filed at the Development Services Center. A case file number is assigned and listed in the early notification report, which goes out to the neighbor councils as well as any interested parties, and the case is assigned to the planners. The case file is reviewed and the application is deemed complete. Once that happens, the case review is conducted in terms of design review, environmental review, as well as uh, the, the development review and the entitlement. If appropriate, a categorical exemption is issued, a decision letter is drafted, reviewed by the supervisors, and the uh, decision is issued. The appeal period, which is typically 15 days, begins for the project, and then the appeal period continued, con concludes, and the applicant can go forward with clearing their conditions and holding their building permits. Another example is a zoning administrator case with the, with the MND. An example of this could be a uh, restaurant that is being built from the ground up and, and the restaurant is requesting alcohol permits, uh, but if the restaurant, let's say, were on um, a property with, um, let's say, a gas station on it that had a history of leaking underground storage tanks, then they're going to need to do even a more review through a uh, mitigated negative declaration. So let's go through this process. What is highlighted in red is um, identified to be different from the previous process, which was a DIR case with the categorical exemption. First, similarly, application is filed at the Development Services Center. A case number is assigned, listed in early notification, and assigned to a case planner. Case file is reviewed, application deemed complete. Uh, once that happens, the case uh, review is conducted. And as part of that is the initial study and the MND process. Uh, when we have an MND, we typically ask for a myriad of studies that can help support and justify why there is an impact or isn't an impact, um, and if and when the mitigation will happen for the um, impact that has been identified. In this case, it would be a, necessary for the site to clean up 
uh, the underground storage tank prior to starting new construction and grading. So um, all of that information would be provided in the initial study, as well as the mitigation measures for the cleanup and the schedule for the cleanup. Uh, once the initial study is complete, there would be a 20 to 30 day public notice and all of our environmental documents are stored and presented on our website and there are uh, ways you can participate listed and give comments for each project. Once an MND is completed for a ZA case, there is a public hearing with a notification, 24 day notification period. Uh, once the hearing is conducted, the zoning administrator will make a decision uh, based on all of the input that is provided as well as the um, staff report uh, that is drafted by the staff planner. The LOD is finalized, reviewed, and issued. Uh, similarly, the appeal period begins and then the appeal period completes. Finally, we're going to talk about a project uh, that is a commission, citywide planning commission case, with an uh, environmental impact report and a uh, review by the city council. A project like this would be something that requires a legislative action, otherwise it typically wouldn't go to council as an initial decision or as a decision maker. Um, similarly, the application is filed at the Development Services Center, case file numbers assigned, um, cases listed and early notification and assigned to the planner. Uh, for projects going to the Citywide Planning Commission, there's typically an internal peer review um, in partnership with the Urban Design Studio and the um, American Institute of Architects. The PVP Professional Volunteer Program is a meeting of design professionals, architects, that come to volunteer their time to review projects and give advice to project planners about how to improve the urban design and the architecture of a particular project to um, better meet our citywide design guidelines as well as uh, whatever design principles that would apply to the project. Um, simultaneously, there is an initial study that occurs. Um, for environmental impact reports, we have the EIR scoping meeting. The, once the draft is completed, there's a comment period uh, that, that lapses. Um, once the comments are received, a final environmental impact report is prepared with uh, response to all of the comments. All of that information uh, is included as part of the staff report, which uh, provides the facts and justifications for um, the recommendation that goes to the Citywide Planning Commission at its planning meeting. There's also a public hearing that occurs, usually held by a hearing officer, uh, to collect testimony and summarize it for the Planning Commission um, at its meeting uh, to consider. Uh, once the Planning Commission makes a decision, uh, the decision letter is drafted, reviewed, and issued, um, and the appeal period begins and concludes for some of the entitlements that may not need to continue through the administrative or the legislative process. The entitlements that do need to continue on, on the legislative process, such as a general plan amendment or a zone change, would go to the Planning and Land Use Management Committee of the City Council first, and then um, it would go to the City Council for a hearing uh, for a zone change that's adopted by ordinance, the mayor would sign it. Now let's take a final review of the project planning workflow. Again, projects that are by right go directly to building and safety uh, at the Development Services Center to pull a permit. Depending on what type of project it is, uh, the project will come to the Department of City Planning. There are administrative considerations in terms of case filings. We have to stay within the regulatory framework. Development review happens uh, in terms of reviewing plans and making sure all of the rules and regulations are complied with. Uh, there's environmental review through CEQA, design review, as well as public involvement before a decision is made in certain types of cases where the zoning code requires that type of participation. Our Department of City Planning website at planning.lacity.org is a great starting place to find out more information about the projects that have been filed near your area as well as the rules and regulations that apply. Let's go there now. This is our city planning website. A few um, 
highlights. Up here, there are some very helpful buttons about getting to our zoning and information and map access system, case reports, and publications, as well as our map gallery and demographics. Over here, we have information about commissions and hearings. This is where you would click to find out any uh, hearings and notices for public hearings that are occurring in your general vicinity. For example, if you click on the Central Los Angeles Area Planning Commission, you will see that there are agendas for meetings for all projects within the central area, which cover this geography here, Hollywood, Wilshire, Westlake, Central City, and Central City North. You can click on any of these buttons to get notices as for hearings that are happening within your area, as well as agendas for future Central Area Planning Commission meetings. Another important button is the Community Resources button. This is where you can click to join our mailing list to find out what's happening um, in the Department of City Planning. There is a blog for um, our department as well, so you can find out the latest and greatest about what's happening within the City of Los Angeles Planning Department. And we also have our newsletters and our annual report. Another important resource is our Development Services Centers. You can make an appointment to meet with a planner through clicking this uh, dial here, uh, and it'll take you to a site where you can um, send a message to our planners to make an appointment. Early notification is a great way to get involved and stay involved in the projects and cases that are being filed within your area. The way you reach early notification on our website is to go to the hearings, Commissions and Hearings page and click on the Subscribe to Notifications link. It will lead you to this page, the Department of City Planning Early Notification System, where you can subscribe or unsubscribe uh, to notifications by Area Planning Commission area. So we have our seven areas here. And by example, let's click on this North Valley. So here you can uh, sign up for early notification by clicking this image below. And here there's the subscribe or unsubscribe to the list link and you would just follow that to get to the page, the subscription page. Let's walk through how to use our zoning information and map access system, commonly known as Zemus. To access Zemus, you would go through this button right here on our website. Zemus is a great resource uh, to look up any information about cases that have been filed um, past, present, as well as ordinances and special regulations that apply to a specific site. So today we are going to look at a property in the Wilshire area. And you would type in the house number. And you can actually put in any part of the address and it'll pull up uh, a few hits here. And we're going to go to this 401 Southwestern. Now this is a project that was approved a few years ago um, on 4th and, or filed a few years ago on 4th and Western. Here you have a drop down list of information that is super helpful if you're researching any site. The first, it has the site addresses, the zip code, um, this jurisdictional tab is really helpful. It tells you what community plan you're in as well as the APC area, the Neighborhood Council. This is in the Wilshire Center, Koreatown uh, Neighborhood Council. This is also in Council District 10. And this also leads you to building permit info. If you, if you click that, it'll lead you to a page um, that is run by Building and Safety that tells you all of the different types of permits that have been pulled for this property. You can see here there's been uh, a lot of permits. You can also scroll down and find out if there has been any code enforcement um, actions or um, inquiries that have been pulled for any property. Going back to Zemus, we also have the planning and zoning tab, which is very helpful information. It tells you the zone. Uh, the zoning information section tells you any specific uh, regulations or information that can inform um, the types of regulations and um, rules that apply to a specific project. 
This property is in the Los Angeles State Enterprise Zone and is also a transit priority area in the City of Los Angeles. It has information about whether there's historic preservation review, uh, whether it's an adaptive reuse incentive area. There's also the general plan land use, um, as well as our zoning. This is a C2-1 zoned property. Um, another helpful piece of information here is for the case numbers. So if you click on that, it'll tell you all the different uh, types of cases that have been filed um, on the site. This case uh, there in 2015 was a filing for a density bonus case. And if you click on this case number, 2015, DIR 2015-3161, Site Plan Review and Density Bonus, it'll lead you to our planning document, uh, case summary, and documents page. Um, you can see here there's a case number and the date it was filed, the date it was assigned, and the, um, the action that was taken, uh, the address as well. And you can pull all relevant documents, including the determination letter, uh, the plans for the site, through clicking these live links. So here you can see that the project was approved with two incentives and there was a site plan review. And that is how you would reach uh, our website and find information about determinations that have been made on specific projects. And that concludes our Project Planning 101 presentation. We thank you so much for joining us today and hope the information presented will help you get involved and participate in the projects that are happening within your area. If you have any more questions or concerns, please contact our neighborhood liaisons, Fabiola and Dylan, at the contact information listed behind me. Thank you so much.